<laughs> Welcome to Rugby M, and today's a special show. It's our best bits, myself and Jonesy, picking out some of the stories and some of the people who've been in the studio and, and, and lit it up and give us some real laughs and also just some things we're proud of for this season. Uh, firstly, Jonesy, you've signed again. Congratulations. We knew, we knew here, but we couldn't say anything. Uh, your 20th year, you must be really proud. I'm really proud, mate. It's a real special honour to play for your own town club. The, 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 the team that I grew up supporting and loved and where all my heroes were and obviously to win that first grand final in 2004 which was the start of that mega journey, a bit of a golden decade if you like, was amazing because the club had never won a championship while I'd been alive so to win it uh, and be on the pitch at the time, the first one I saw was, was pretty amazing and to go on and, and have the success that we've had, meet the people that I've met, everything that I am today as a human being, almost everything has been accredited to rugby league and uh, the journey that I've had at Leeds and the environment that it's encapsulated. So to do 20 years has only been John Holmes yep. who's done it as the legend and he is one of the club's best and uh, to sort of follow in the, those sort of footsteps is a, is a massive honour, so real privileged. One man who I love is Mal Reilly. He's uh, been absolutely superb with us throughout our journey on rugby. I'm always been there, always on the phone, happy to help. Yeah, um, let's go see Mal Reilly now as he tells us an amazing story about his time coaching Newcastle Knights uh, and the man himself, Andrew Johns, check this out. Who was the toughest man you coached or played with? I think it would have to be Andrew Johns. Uh, and, and he's an halfback, uh, played number seven. I, I coached him and didn't play. I wish I'd have been able to play with him. Andrew was, uh, he, he, he was about 90 kgs, maybe a little bit more, uh, stood about uh, uh, five foot seven, five foot eight. But he, he was immense. He, he used to pick players up and and forwards and drive them into the floor. But um, his 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 real uh, quality was in his vision and in his ability to create things and his kicking game. He, he was the complete footballer uh, and tough. Uh, what made him so tough? Well, in one of the games, it was it was a preliminary semi final, preliminary uh, semi final, and and uh, uh, I think it was North. So anyway, he, he he had three ribs broke. Someone kicked him on the floor and broke three ribs. Uh, so uh, the following week, uh, he trained with us for twenty minutes, and we had to in give him injections. The doctor came in and gave him uh, two or three injections in the rib area just to train with us. Wow! So he. Uh, he trained and then he, we played the game and he had his injections in the game uh, and uh, he, he, he came off at half time uh, and I addressed the team and then we went into the physio room to, because the doctor didn't realise, he didn't know just how long the injections would last yeah. to camouflage these three broken ribs so we went into the the, the med medical room and I saw him inject Andrew again uh, with, with the painkillers and uh, I won't uh, I won't tell you what I said but I, th I thought geez that's gone in really deep yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can sure yeah uh, and, and I just walked out went into my seat and Andrew didn't come out um, and what had happened is the, the doctor had punctured his lung in two places yeah. so not only yeah. had he got three broken ribs <laughs> He'd got a punctured lung, so they rushed him straight off to hospital. We won the game, and uh, it's the grand final next next week. And yeah. he wanted to play, but and I wanted him to play because he's a crucial part of the, of, of, of whatever the team can achieve. Yeah. Being so instrumental in in directing play and such a great defensive player as well. And uh, and so we we decided we were going to play him, uh, and when we needle him up again. And he he um, he managed to to play the first half, and and he came off. Uh, we, we needled him. I think the doctor did it again, and then he um, our trainer Mark Wright went to the touchline side, and and he spoke to, to us, uh, I spoke to Mark and said, I want to come off. I'm in too much pain. This is about 20 minutes to go in the game. It left in the game. Uh, we'd battered the, the manly forwards in this grand final, yeah. and they had a great side too. You know, uh, there were six international, four international, instead of Origin players, in their team. Uh, and uh, he um, 
he wanted to come off and Mark said, look, Mark, mate, he's in too much pain. I said, put the headphones on him. And so I put the headphones on, on, Matt, on Andrew and I said, mate, I said, look, I know you're in pain. I said, but we really can't win this game without you. And the kid just turned around and went back out. You know, he just turned around, accepted that and went out again and started playing football. And uh, Matthew Johns, had, 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 10 minutes ago, had hit the upright with a drop goal to seal the game. Uh, and no, it was, it was like three minutes to go. And then Manly marched the ball down the field and we took it back up to 30 minutes. With, and Andrew got into acting half back and Darren Albert, a winger, had just taken the ball in and he told Darryl, Darren to stay alive. Matthew's uh, uh, ready to drop a goal and all the Manly side were, were, were anticipating that that was what, what was going to happen. But Andrew read it instantly, shot down the short side. He said to Darren, stay alive. He beat the first player, engaged the second, and give Darrell Darren the ball under the under the sticks, fifty with fifteen meters out, and we won with with six seconds to go. We won a grand final with six seconds to go, kicked the goal, twenty two sixteen. There you go. It's just he it, it, it just showed that much character, you know. With all those, I mean, it'd be too easy for him to say, yeah. okay, I can't do this, you know, get me off the field. Yeah. I've had a punctured lung and and three broken ribs in two weeks, you know, what do you want from me? But he, he, that's the character he was. Uh, uh, success, it's not something you stumble onto, it's something you've sincerely prepared for. And I think the team was well prepared, but he was mentally really prepared for it. And he came up with the goods. And uh, he made uh, thousands and thousands of Newcastle fans happy uh, at the same time. Some players I want to talk about, two players, yep. Ben Westwood, Mickey Iam, because they're both older than you and they're still playing. Yeah. Well, Mickey Iam, um, I mean, Mickey Iam's oh, been, he's, he's been wonderful, hasn't he? And uh, I didn't realise he was older than me, actually. Yeah. He was uh, same school year, but he's about 11 months older. Ben Westwood's only two weeks older, I think, and he actually texted me as well yesterday and uh, he says, oh, congratulations, you're going again, then, yeah? <laughs> and uh, he winded me up, he says, oh, it looks like you're going to get mantle. I says, why are you finishing? He went, no, I'm only joking. Uh, but um, no, listen, he's, he's fantastic, and I sp having spoke to him, he's not going to make up numbers either. Nah. And you know Benny Westwood, he's going to fire himself out of a gun and take somebody's eyebrows out, isn't he? <laughs> um, he's, uh, he's a rough, tough player, and I've really enjoyed competitive battles against players like him yeah. over the years. He's, he's right up there, one of the best. I, I don't think he'll ever retire, Benny. No, no, probably not, no. One of the uh, superstars of being unearthed to rugby, I mean, I love him, he's Shandy Bass, yeah. Lee super fan. And yeah. it just came from um, Martin Ridyard and Mickey Iam telling us their local celebrity, and we thought he'd be playing. I said, oh, no, it's Shandy Bass. And I got to meet Shandy Bass, and, he, and he's featured on the show a few times. And uh, Mickey takes us around his town. We're going to go over there now to Lee. Mickey Hyam takes us around his town. Mickey Iam, outside Lee Centurions, welcome to my town. Lee, let's go and have a look around. So first stop off, we're at Lee East, uh, one of my former junior clubs. Actually, this this um, setup doesn't hold too much sentiment to me, but the old ground where they used to play, and a lot of good memories growing up as a kid there. Um, yeah, I've uh, got a funny story about that actually. I remember one night on the old um, all weather pitch, we were training dark, I think it was near a bonfire night. Anyway, next minute, two little kids at the bottom of the bottom of the training field, looking down like, what are they doing? And next minute. <laughs> They lit two fireworks straight up the straight up the all weather pitch. So anyway, we all chased them off. Didn't find them, but um, that's what that's what you, that's what you get used to around Lee. Dodging fireworks and then straight back with a bit of ball work. So yeah, good times at least. My eldest lad, Harry, is 13 now. He plays, he plies his trade here. My youngest lad, Alex, he's at Lee Miners. So as, as you you kind of get a bit of a bit of a theme. Things don't run smoothly me at certain times. I don't know why. So yeah, I've got one at each. But again, two local clubs, you know, close to my heart, and obviously both in the town of Lee. So. Yeah, this is where it all starts in grassroots. So 
Well, next stop off is uh, June Avenue. Um, this is where I was born and raised in the early 80s. Yeah, um, and had some really good memories around here, kicking the ball on the street and stuff. And also, my next door neighbour, when I was brought up, when I lived around here, was a local celebrity that you might know. Are you moving back in, Mickey? Yeah. Which, of course, is Shandy Bass. Yeah. So, uh, never a dull moment in June Avenue. You know, we had some good times, didn't we, mate? We um, watched the rugby, come round for a brew. So, um, anyway, all the best, Richie. Nice to see you. I'm going to move on to my next destination. All right. So our next stop, um, as you can see, and the old saying is, behind every good man is a good boozer. <laughs> the wagon horses. Um, many good few pints in here, had good times. Um, also, this is where I took me, now is my wife, was my girlfriend then, on a first um, first date here. Pool, pool in the pints, so um, she couldn't refuse me when I took her here. Two kids, marriage and hours later, you know, it's um, my dad's local boozer as well, and. I think he took me for my first pint here in about 16, so yeah, I had some good times here. Plenty of lock-ins and all that. Um, New Year's Eve parties, dressed as Elvis, you know the, you know the drill, all the lads in the tap room. Um, I'm not going too much into any more than that, but um, yeah, this is what probably made me a man <laughs> and sorted me out. Proper bitter, no lager drinking here, it's only bitter, so yeah, good times. Next stop is um, a place that keeps me out of trouble, keeps me busy during the week. Um, try fitness, the gym I've got in Lee. Um, yeah, I've got classes on every night of the week, so um, it keeps me busy. It's a little bit of nice little bit of work on the side, and as you can see in the background, Lee Centurions use the gym as well, and one of your co-workers as well, Mr. Paul Wood, I think is is looking busy there. Hi, Paul. As yeah, so what? Obviously, Lee boys use the gym as well, so yeah, it's a nice little um, thing on the side for when. Obviously, when rugby finishes, you can, um, you know, you've got, you've got something else to fall back on. So, yeah, nice gym, classes every day of the week and weekends, and nice and busy. I like it. As you know, rugby lads, they love a good feed. And there's no better place than this butter shop. Eat, drink, read. Let's go inside, have a look. Here he is. All right, Steve. Yeah, not talking about you, just giving you, singing your praises. Yeah. Best butter shop around here. Well, so um, Went to my old house, next door to a shander. Did he show up? Oh, he did. Yeah, showed up in style, so yeah. Local boozer, and then just went to the gym, and then just said we're near gym, so we'll pop yeah, here. Yeah, thanks, pal. Yeah. It's a decent butter shop, aren't you? You do alright, don't you? So. We'll try our best. <laughs> we'll try our best, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's time for a butter, so I'm going to go now. Uh, thanks for coming to my town. Thanks for coming to Lee. Jones, you YouTube is a big thing for us now because next year they have an official partnership with YouTube which is really nice, they're recognising our channel Rugby M as a bona fide channel because we've done so well on Minutes Watch. We had over a million Minutes watched in one month a couple of months ago. Yeah, it's, it's the next platform. My kids, I, I think I asked my kids to put telly on, they're like, how do I put telly on? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't understand that we get it from the the network where they watch YouTube, you know, the, yeah. the web connection yeah. to, to live television <laughs> and, and I'm thinking wow what a different world we live in but people are making their own channels they've got millions of followers and that's just how kids consume content now that's just how it is um, and it, nobody really knows I don't think well we're, we're getting an idea yeah. of where it's going to go but nobody knows where it will ultimately end in sort of 10 15 years time but we certainly need to be prepared to jump on the back of it because you know rugby league needs to take up that opportunity as well our most watched video this year with George Burgess yep. five toughest got his shirt there 
how tough a player is he to handle? Mate, he's massive. I haven't played against him for a long time. Obviously, there were kids when they come through. Uh, yeah. Bradford, even even Sam initially, you know, yeah. he's, he's a young lad, wasn't he? And then they, they quickly rose through the ranks and went on to bigger, better things. But I remember when we did this at Redfern at the yeah. training ground, it was one of my favourite days when we was in Australia for World Cup because I was so shocked at what Redfern was as a venue. <laughs> yeah. now, it's a very historical venue for yeah. the South Sydney Rabbit Holes, but it's like in the middle of a roundabout, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. like in a very, very public place where people come and eat the sandwiches. Yeah. And I always thought NRL clubs were just top secret and massive and nobody was allowed in unless yeah. they got invited. And uh, George took us round as well, which was a real fascinating insight, and that uh, got a lot of views uh, as well. So, yeah, really good day. Right, let's go over to Redfern and check out George Burgess, Five Toughest. I remember way back about 10 years ago when I used to coach the young kids in and around Leeds, people like Stevie Ward and Brad Singleton, and two monsters turned up that I'd heard a lot about because of Sam Burgess and that was Tom and George. I remember thinking these are going to be outstanding for Leeds, hopefully one day because it was my club, but uh, just before Christmas we had our last training session. I remember both of them coming up really polite, nice as you could ever think of a 15 year old and went thanks for what you've done for us Jamie uh, we'll see you later and I've got this inkling that they might not be playing at Leeds next year and they, they ended up at Bradford which was fair enough because you've gone on a, a great journey one of the, the most iconic names in rugby league now particularly in NRL and uh, you're still only 25 yeah. years old so to ask him who the, the top five toughest guys he's played against it's probably still a bit early because you've maybe yeah. got another 10 years Definitely, if you last yeah. as long as I have done um, but George, you have played in some big games, you've come across some big men. Let's start with number five. Who would say is your fifth toughest guy you've played against? Um, I think all of my uh, toughest opponents have all been forwards. Um, yep. Of course, yeah. One, one, of the, one of the hardest blocks in rugby league was, was Petro Sivanasiva, and I, I didn't play many games against him, but it, yeah. the few games I did, he was always, always tough. You know, it's like tackling a a brick wall, basically. So he's uh, he was a tough player. Went all day, and uh, yeah. The big, the big Fijian money. Yeah, big and Fijian. Jimmy Peacock tells a story. I won't burn it because it's not my story to tell. But he's at the centre of it, and uh, he personifies how tough this guy is, like a brick wall. Yeah, like granite. Massive. And I imagine there'll be a fair few players when we ask them in five or six years' time who the toughest opponents they've played against. I'm sure you know, maybe three or four might end with Burgess, but who's, who's number four? Who's your number four? The Sims brothers always, you know, were always a tough, tough opponents and always took it to me. So I'd say Ashton Sims, you know, when he was yeah. when he was playing in, in the NRL, he, I always had some good battles with him. And uh, yeah, he was, he was always a... Uh, a good opponent in the front row. Because you don't always have to be massive either. I think with Ashton Sims for me, he's, he's somebody that's quite resilient and persistent and he keeps coming, doesn't he? Yeah. He's a bit grubby. I remember once on yeah, rugby. He's got a bit of that bit, bit of that grubbiness in him, but I suppose that's what makes makes you uh, makes him stand out a bit more. Yeah, I want I want to grow my hair like his. Yeah. I, I love his hair. Why, why don't you? you, you I'm going to grow my hair like him. Big beard as well. But uh, me and Simo turned up in some fancy dress anyway and uh, we looked daft enough, but Simo went and said to him, I've heard from a lot of players that you're a grub. And I just wanted to float swallowing up, thought, what is he doing? But yeah. it, that's what it was like, innit? Yeah, his, his brothers as well. He's, I've played against all his brothers. You know, Tariq, not as much, but Corbin is young. I played against Corbin in the 20s and he's very similar. Yeah. Big, big body and a bit of a grub size. So but good, good, uh, good, fella, good fellas and, um, you know, they're, they're a really good family. Well, they'll get a lot of uh, viewing of Ashton Sims in Toronto next year. Who's uh, number three for you, Georgie? I'd say James Graham's up there. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, you know, every time you're playing against him, you know he's on the field, and uh, you, 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 know, you can definitely hear him. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, he's everywhere. He's, he's always on the ball, and um, you know you've got to get in front of him. He's hard work. I used to have some battles with him when he was at that St. Helens team that were unbelievable in 06-07. Yeah. And I once heard this scientific study, I read it, and it's not my fault. If it's true, it's true. If it ain't, I don't know, but I read it and it's true, I'll find it. That one said that people with ginger hair have got a lower pain tolerance. Really? Apparently don't like pain, but yeah. he does like pain because he'll does bleed. His arms me. and legs can be falling off and he'll still keep coming on yeah, it. Definitely. Horrible, stubborn Always little scouser. Going. Great yeah. to play with, great to play with though, but yeah. you know, even better to play against. Yeah, he's yeah. a good lad, very good player. Rate him right up there. Uh, who's your number two? Number two, um, it'd have to be the Kiwi, um, Jason Tamalolo. Yeah. Right. He's a very strong runner, got great footwork, and you've got to really be 
you know, on, on your on your on your game to tackle him and you know put your body in front of him to stop him. So absolutely, he's a he's a big man. He's an up and coming player in the NRL, and you know he's seen he's seen him win the Dally M last couple of years. So he's he's just just killing it over here. Is it that bit of footwork? Because when you play a big guy, sometimes you line them up and. Yeah. They just do that little gym kit at the last minute, yeah. puts you off balance and makes you look silly, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, his footwork and his speed is probably he's, he's one of the fastest players in the game and he's a forward, so he's uh it's up yeah, it's pretty impressive. Fast twitch muscle fibers, yeah. big uh, drum roll. Uh who's the number one toughest player you've ever played against? I'd say Sonny Bill Williams, um, when he was playing at the Roosters in 2013, 2014 he was you know one of the best players in the comp then and um, he was really hard to tackle. Uh, so one, another pl player that's got really good footwork and acceleration. Yeah, uh, he can really accelerate into the, into the line, and he's hard hard player to stop. So, and he's got just you know, a bag full of skills and stuff. So, he's he's definitely up there. Ellen Road, 2005 against the Bulldogs. He ended Ryan Bailey. He ended Marcus Bay. Tough. And I thought he's not ending me because I'm gonna go stand out in centre, yeah. get well away from him. Yeah. But uh, he did it often with a shoulder charge which is yeah. banned now isn't it yeah, do you no, think I mean, that takes away from spectacle a little bit yeah it does a little bit I mean he was the king of the shoulder charge wasn't right. he and um, you know, fans love seeing it and if you you, know, you still watch the highlight reels you know, they still show shoulder charges on the highlight reels so it's it's one of them one things things really they want to make the game safer so that you know parents want their kids to play and yeah. and all that stuff and, and you know build the build the game in the future but we also want to keep it exciting for the fans and um, you know, I think this, I think it can be altered a little bit, but um, yeah, I like the shoulder charge. We should have a director's cut league where anything goes. A bit like yeah. Battle Royale, that would be pretty cool. George, you're outstanding as always. Thanks for giving us your time here at Rugby. Cheers, Jonesy. Going to finish the part, finish uh, the part one, some a little bit light-hearted. Scene of the crime right here. <laughs> you oh. bigged it up after Woody did not win. I can do that, I can eat that, yeah, I can mate. eat that. They were not, like, what mate, it were not like what Woody did. <laughs> the, wood, the stuff that Woody did was red. That was black, mate. Yeah. It was just, just that one out of poison. 3.5 million it was Scoville. Like some of that <laughs> weirdness would have produced 20 years ago at the <laughs> chemical factory. And uh, you decided to stick it in your eyeball for reasons beyond my comprehension. It killed me. Check this out. This is Jones are trying the hot wings and me getting a bit of hot sauce in my eye to finish the part. Stay tuned right here, free spots for more in part two. Right, get, get, the thing to do is get it down here as quick as you can before the pain kicks in. Go. Go, Reese, go on, lad. Go on, lad, get in here. No, get in here, get in here. You gotta get in. Get in, get in. You, get, you want another bite now. Another, another bite. Come on, one more bite. One more bite, you can have your meal. <laughs> one more bite, one more, one bite, more you bite, you can have your meal. One more bite, you can have your meal for you and six Come on. Minutes. One bite. Yeah. Go on, get in here. <laughs> Go on. Oh, 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 Reece. Uh, do you know what, Reese? You get the meal anyway, do you? So what we did was uh, we got about six sauces that were all about a million Scovilles, and we started off with a litre of sauce. So if you think about that, if you add six of them together, it doesn't make six million Scovilles. But what we did is to try and reduce that down by about two, uh, about three quarters. So we go from a litre, which would be about a million, down to about a quarter of a litre, which by my reckoning, in a little bit of uh, crummy map, uh, uh, fag packet mass takes it to about three million Scovilles. Of course I'm doing one. Of course I'm doing one. Yeah, one bite. One bite. Keep going, lad. Keep going. Another bite, another bite, another bite. Get in the bite. Up started. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, the reaction is. I think it's a... Good bite. Is he even delusional? No, thank you. Like <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you boys do the best of us. Wait, 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 because I need to get some film. <laughs> 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 Was it hotter than what Woody had last week? Oh, 100%, yeah. So Scott, my business partner, made the one last week and there's a big rival between me and him as well. So the fact that I've stopped you this week just means that I've, uh, I've got the, the chilli crown now. There you go. Disgusting. Worst thing I've ever eaten in my life, but it was an, it was an education experience. <laughs> 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 